have a few new things here. I got this box in the post today. Open it up and it has a test indicator into it. Lever test indicator. Now I was hoping that it would be a lever that moves but apparently the lever doesn't move so it's a solid lever but not to worry and the accuracy on this should be I think it's an inch yep uh, four ten thousandths of an inch is the accuracy on this Give it half a turn, zero that out. I think we better tighten it up because it seems to be moving quite a bit. What bit's moving? Ah, it's because I didn't tighten this up. Awesome. On to the parts, half a turn. On to zero, of course you'll never be able to see the zero. So I'll just wound the moving jaw all the way out as you can see. And I can feel the not quite ground perfectly. Still zero there. So what I need to do here is lower it way down. I need to get it right down to there. I'll just lift it off the base a little bit, put it in there. See if I can come off again and go back on. Yes, I can. Is it consistent? I get a zero reading. That's zero, okay. Off, back on again, side to side. Zero there, right. Forward, it's going up. So it's a bit bowed. Across, it's good. And that's good. Ish. No, that's pretty good. Obviously there's oil on it. And that'll make a difference. But yeah, that's within five tenths from what I've measured there. So the base is parallel ground to the thing, so I can knock things into it and get reasonable accuracy, which is okay. Because the way the things were milled on this, it won't ever be mega precise. But, there we go. That little vice is good. And the indicator is working for me. So that's my new vice. It came as part of the package. It's still got... I'm going to clean it before I start using it. It's probably got grinding dust in it from the grinding process. And that is perfect for milling on the on the lathe with. Along with the vice, I got the three jaw chuck, 65 millimeters. So I'll be measuring that next. Got to clean it up a bit first. And this. This has got a ding on it, so I'm being extremely careful at the moment. It will rock. Got a ding on it. So I must attend to the ding first. Let's see if we can get rid of the ding. The ding is there. Right in that corner, okay? Right, first things first, I'm going to get a medium or coarse. What have we got? I know we've got something. Okay, that 
should up. Stopped it from rocking. Let's get all the grinding dust off of it, the stone dust. Slip it back on again. No more rocking anymore. I've got a little rotary table. So undo the locking thing a bit. And it locks. A little rosary table. Excellent. Right, let's have the gauge on the rotary table. Right, let's have a sharpie marker there. Sharpie marker. That is my zero. That is a zero. And that is back to zero again, ish. There. So it goes all up to five. Five times five is twenty. Oh, come on. Five, one, one point five, two, two point five, three, three point five, four, four point five, five thousand an inch run out on that oh so I'll give that a miss for today figuring out what's wrong with that but this has been dropped and this plate has been replaced uh, it got dropped in the delivery process you might have seen it I'm turning it around this has got a dent in the top so this top plate, I'm getting a new one of these, and that's what the chuck screws onto. So the chuck will screw onto that plate. Um, so for the time being, I need to clean this up more. I think I'll leave it for now because I've had enough fun with my new gauge and my new rotary table. And yes, this is only a small rotary table. I think it's three inches table might be four can't remember now 80 mil I think 80 mil rotary table 65 millimeter chuck and 80 mil vice the vice supposedly can be mounted on it as well although I don't see how because it's got three holes in it and it's got four slots but hey ho new parts for today now tonight I am measuring this, so we'll have some height here, well, we'll try and get some height, and we'll have it pointing out straighty straighty, we'll bring it down until we get a touch.
zeroed. Now we're going to go around. Let's see what we get. So far, two thou. That's three thou. That's a thou the other way. Four thou. We should come back to zero here. Yeah. yeah, approximately zero there. So that surface is not flat. Down to a zero. Let's see if moving it across has any. So yeah, that's. Off the scale, that's three thou low. That's four thou low. That's five thou low. There might be some dirt on the table for that. Zero is about here somewhere. Yeah, there's zero. So oh yeah, there's some run out on that. It doesn't quite sit square. So I think I'm going to be taking this to pieces to see if the casting is square. Anyhow, this was the backing plate sent to me, which came with the machine. Let's see what kind of damage it's got on it. It was dropped. There's a bit of drop action there as well. This is being ground up pretty badly, this has. And there's the, you can see it there, it's pretty bad. And to be fair, there's some back here as well, and you can see that. That was pretty bad. Yeah, that's shocking. Then they sent me a replacement one. And there's a few rust spots on it. few turning marks there that haven't been quite been ground out a few turning marks there that haven't been ground out so yeah the finish is not great at all finger tight I think is going to be good enough for these See if that relays into that plate. Yeah, yeah. Exactly the same, no difference. Obviously they've got the movement there. It's just a bit of doubt on that side. It doesn't move on this side too much. It's all there where it moves. It might be the base moving, I don't know. At present, I don't know. So my plan now is take off the handle assembly and dismantle it. But before we do that, let's see if the chuck fits on to the new back plate. Yep, that's it, that's on. Tweet. Okay, so. Oh, don't do that, man. Yep, 
Yeah, that needs stripping and cleaning as well. So I'll strip and clean that as well. Bit of the dust and crud out of that. But to be fair, apart from the amount of crud inside it, that feels pretty good. The rotary table itself, not so good. Uh -huh. It's a bit of grease here, let's get that off. Any dust. Right. Just wipe the back off. Bring this surface gauging, get that one out of the way. Oh, let's take this one off. Make sure there's nothing here. Got the right angle, angular dangular. Let's bring the camera in a bit closer. There. Right. Zero. Deviation there. No, that was just me doing something. I think I'm getting oil, I'm dragging oil or grease around with it. Yeah, I've just done something. I've just touched something. So there's a bit of a dip there, where the two marks are. But there... That's a ten thousandth of an inch indicator each division is. And I wasn't moving any more than four of those divisions. So that's pretty accurate. So we can't blame all the run out on the Yeah, we can't blame the run out of the top on this surface here. Now this surface is not a bearing surface by any stretch of the imagination at all. And I need, <laughs> it's pretty rough. It's rusty and you know, it ain't, it ain't bad, it's it's turned okay, but, you know, it's just not quite calling. And we've got seven thou here. Sorry, probably three and a half thou. We've got seven thou of rock. And I was measuring it at the low spot here, which is a couple of tenths. Seven thousandths of rock. But this bearing down the bottom, what it sits in, so this 
this land here you can see the shiny bit where I've been pushing it in and out of the bearing that sits in the bearing quite tight and then the whole unit relies on that bearing from what I can see for its accuracy <laughs> this bearing is minute so this bearing is a 6001Z which is basically I've got a set of bearings here basically one of these cheapo bearings now these are not 6001Zs these are 6000Zs I believe I can't quite read it in there these are 6000 C dash 2 Z's so these are smaller awesome can't use those I'll have to order a new bearing but clearly I'm not going to replace it with that shielded bearing which is as rough as a piece of sandpaper going across a piece of metal that really is rough but it is no smoothness about that at all I'm going to get one of these new fag bearings out and uh, I'm getting the bearing out and it is smooth you know that is smooth but there is rock in it. There's a definite clear amount of rock in it. I mean, seriously, it rocks a lot. That alone, that bearing alone, cannot be expected to take any kind of is that, is that lateral movement. It, it can't take any any type of loads side to side at all on its own two together yeah it certainly I can't take any thrust it's probably a deep groove ball bearing but I mean that doesn't mean it can take any kind of thrust at all but these are just cheapo bearings for the bandsaw If I just put another bearing in that, I'm still going to have this rocking movement. And there's nothing there to stop it from rocking apart from that. So I'm going to have to figure something else out. And the other thing is, there's loads of material moving, uh, uh, not in there basically, from the casting. So clearly... I found casting sand in this, so that is the way the casting was. Why they've done it, you know, obviously it saves a bit of material, but I don't know. Why you would not want to have that material in there? It saves one operation, which is the amount that you have to mill out when you when you when you're pushing your cutter into mill out to get the worm gearing but I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet right I've gone into strip down mode on this this is the small rotary table it's brand new made in India and there's the T-slot, so you can see them. It's a bit weird about the T-slots. Let me get a key. I use the key to get it to pieces. The key goes in nice and tight. don't know what size the key is, but it goes in nice and tight. But it doesn't go all the way through. I don't know if you can see in there. There's like a ridge halfway down, as if it hasn't been machined properly. So at the top there, we've got a little bit of slack. It 
just wobbles a little bit. And I suppose the bottom will be right. This is um this is not a millimeter key. This will be five sixteenths or something. But it doesn't go all the way in. Whether that's meant to be like that, I don't know. It might be just to stop the key from going in. I mean, it fits okay. It's not bad. But I was getting some graunchiness, and I was wondering where the graunchiness was coming from. Now this is the grease, and that feels okay. Okay, that feels all right. Here's the assembly for the worm gear. And the end of the shaft is buggered up because they've put no lands in it. They've just put a set of screws straight into the shaft. So, and there's a bit of a scoring mark there. There's a couple of places where set screws have been. So pulling that off there is not coming off. Anyway, this is the grease that's in the worm gear. And again, it doesn't feel that bad. Can't feel any grit in it at the moment. No, okay, there's no grit in that at the moment. This is the casting. Now inside the casting, there is a divot. And I'll just run my finger inside here, and you can probably hear it. And it's gritty. There's definitely grit in there. So I want to clean this out and see what, oh man, it's like, it's like putting your finger in sugar or salt. So there's definitely grunge inside there. So I'm going to, oh, you can see on the fingers there, now can you see the grit in there? So they're big lumps of grit that are in there. Bear in mind, when I was turning this with the handle, there's the handle there. It was the, it, it had got tight spots and loose spots. Now, as soon as I took the handle assembly out and the worm gear out, I could spin on this surface. Beautiful, it spun beautifully. So obviously, I was expecting the gear to be completely and utterly knackered, but it's not. It seems in good condition. That worm gear is rounded over. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to clean it up better now and have a better look at it. So I will bring you back after cleaning. Alright, firstly apologise for the washing machine in the background, but we have the parts cleaned up. Now the grit was sand from the castings, and you can see there's a few inclusions in there. There might be some sand still in there, but I've scrubbed it with a, uh, a pointy tip tool thing. I've got it here, I've just chipped it in the box again. There we go. With that, I've just scraped all the sand out with that. The worm gear is, let me just see if we can zoom in on that, it is pretty naff. The finish on it is bad. You can see that. There's a few dings on it, you see the ding there, can't you? The end of the gear down this section here is pretty bad, and the end of the gear up here is pretty bad. So that's that's pretty bad. And the brass gear here has already been started to get chowdered up by that not fully engaging gear. It doesn't look like it's fully engaging. It should be fully engaging when it's not. So maybe the angle which it goes in here could do with coming in a bit or maybe machining a slightly larger diameter gear to mesh with the gear inside here so it's not quite carling this one there's the zero this has been chowdered up outside of this diameter has been chowdered up as well don't know why now I think the only way of making this gear mesh better, easily, is to put this in the lathe somehow and get it 
off centre so I can kick it across a bit. I think I'll think about that. Or shimming out one of these just to bring it in a bit. Because as far as I can see, oh yeah, it touches. It touches all over. Oh, this, oh yeah, this touches all over. So if I can make this shim out a little bit. Yeah, the problem here, let me just pause the camera. Now I've just installed the two bolts here. And we're seeing what it's like. So there, it's getting caught right there. So that's clearly not good anywhere there. It's getting caught there. It's not getting caught there. It's getting caught there. It's definitely getting caught there. So this is the catching action that it was getting. So... By the looks of it, if it's all the way in, it's okay. But if you bring it out a little bit, not good. But I think what they're doing is they're using the cast iron and letting the steel rub against it as a bearing at the back there. Because that is properly rubbing against it now. So I think that's what they're doing with this particular thing. It spins freely there, no problem. Just light finger spinning wonderfully, and it gets caught there. So as soon as you go, then this is where the land starts. I'm going to point it out and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if you can see here to here, it's flat. And then it sort of dishes out and goes around here like that. So this section here, I think they've tried to make it so it's actually perfectly engineered to that. To make it some kind of bearing fit at the end there. Which just isn't quite cold and especially if it's pulled out to that length there. Let me just reassemble it a little bit more and see what we've got. So I've reassembled it a more and if you just out of the way a bit just focusing on this area here and you'll see there's no gap and then there's a big gap and there's no gap and there's a big gap but we have a set screw here and it's quite close to the edge so I could put that on from there all the way down to any length I want so theoretically I can adjust this from there where it's graunchy that's alright, that's not bad there so that's alright where it is there or I could have it in the centre there where it's definitely catching or I could have it right at the end there sort of, I don't know how I'm going to get it right to the end there it's just got jammed there's a bit of a burr on that shaft oh this is not easy there we go. We'll cut it right to the end there. And it gets, definitely gets caught there. That's definitely not good. So, this thing here, I'm going to have to put that in a collet, I think, and face the end of that off. I think that's one of the first things I'm going to have to do to get that. Good, and it, it ain't come on off it. There we go, it comes off easy. So, the, the machining on that is pretty naff, and I think I can do better. <laughs> sometimes I can't, sometimes that's what mine looks like. But as long as the outside of this is concentric to the inside, I might make a mandrel. Should I make a mandrel? I think I'm going to make a mandrel, stick it onto a mandrel. And then just face down to the mandrel. I think that's the best way. There's nothing smooth. <laughs> oh, sorry. Move the camera. It's not smooth. I promise you, it's not smooth. And what that bearing is for is... Now, obviously, this goes in from the other side. That bearing is that to go into. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's not good, is it? Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's just that is the play in the bearing. By the way, that is the play in the bearing. We can put that on the precision surface, and then we can. Well, that's four mil. <laughs> it's four mil. I think I can press that bearing out and get a better bearing. So we've got the surface of the table. Then we've got this surface here. And that surface there will be resting on this surface as a bearing. And then I'm wondering whether this vertical, which is now vertical surface here, is supposed to rub on this inside surface here. And if so, it's got movement. And that's not good if you're milling and you're pulling, pushing across like that. That's not good because 7 thou is a lot of movement. So that is not going to be good. They give you a brass screw here. And that screws into the side. And comes through. As I can see there. And then that. Is supposedly going to pinch onto that. Now I have pinched onto it a little bit. And it slipped. Let's see if I can find that mark. I was trying to dismantle it. No, I can't really see that mark anywhere, so okay. But I'm guessing that's where the movement, the side-to-side -side movement was coming from. Now, I'm not sure which way I'd like to improve that, but I'm sure it can be improved. Clearly, I could bore this out down to a certain depth and then make a brass or bronze ring and just press it in there which is an even tighter fit on that that would be brilliant but it wouldn't because it's very very small very small I'm going to have to have a think about how I want to improve that bit there not entirely certain I mean could possibly just simply make a grub screw which comes in from here a grub screw which comes in from here and a grub screw that comes in from here a bit like a steady rest okay we have the shaft, oh my word, it's really tight there. Right there, it's really tight, unbelievable. So, there, yeah, right there is the burr. You can see that, get close. Is it going to focus in on that? Yeah, come on, you can focus on that. So there's a bird, you see it, can't you? Now, yeah, there you go, right at the end. And I believe that's what's it's been pulled into it. It's pulled pulled back as far as it can. So I need to make some kind of brass bush which fits in here to space it into the right position because there's nothing to stop it from coming back. So that's either missing or omitted, and there should be enough space. Well, I don't know. But if not, then I really need to dress under this gear up because that is just going to really knacker. Let's take it off autofocus. That is going to really knacker up the brass gear inside. Well, maybe it does want to be there. I think I'm going to try and get it right there. So I've just hand fettled two brass washers and I've got the mechanism in the sweet spot. There is a slight catching but the other thing is they're a little bit big, they need machining more, they have took all the slop out of the shaft and it's not 
smoothly turning anymore. I don't want to do it too much, but I did want to see if it now turns this with any impedance. Oh, come on, let's just put that in. So that is in now. And now that's, that's pretty nasty. So yeah, no. That is not working. To get this out, I'll just put the bolts back in. Not the easiest of operations and give it a clout. With a precision instrument, obviously. That precision instrument was a um, bore gauge. Not that I'm ever going to use that bore gauge, but you never know. So no, that was not good. Although it's loosened up a lot now, I must say. I think the washer got pushed in. It did, yeah. And that is wonderful now. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, that's that was smooth as anything. But the problem we're having is the engagement place on the teeth is not. It's grinding, it's too tight, there's no play. It is going to be knackered before too long. Oh, well, that's beautiful now. So we've got... And that's cock of end float. Take a bit of that out now. Excellent. Let's take a bit of that out. There's no end float and it's almost seized up. So maybe that was it. Maybe that's why it was a bit tight, because it was forcing against that. We're not knowing. All I know, it, it, all I know is it was very difficult. Maybe I should put some blue on these. Oh man, that was digging in bad. I reckon. Right there. Yeah, hard to tell, because even if I take this gear off, I'll oh, we'll come make a mandrel and put the gear on and see how it's, so I think I'm going to have to make a mandrel here to fit the bearing, and to fit the gear at the right height, and I'll just drop it in and see where the, see where the problem is, but that's for that. Just take a bit of pressure off of that because that isn't feeling nice anymore. So we'll just undo that. Put a bit of hand play on that. Oh, you're not going to, are you now? No, you're not going now. There we go, that'll be enough. Wonderful. Yep. Wonderful. So I've got a few operations that I'm going to have to do on this. And I think where I'm going to start is, I'm liking that brass, uh, but I think I'm going to put more in there. 
and I'm going to bring the worm wheel further in. So die grind that land so this can go in there. Hard to say, really hard to say what it's doing in there. It's pretty rank the feeling. It's a pretty rank feeling. Pretty rank and friend indeed. A little bit annoyed that it's that bad. And that I can't see why it's that bad. Yeah, I just think it's the gears going over that burr there. I think that's what it is. And there's a burr here as well. And it's cut here. So I don't know if I can get that burr to unfold. Yeah, I've got that burr to unfold. There we go, that burr's unfolded. That's out now. Well, I don't think that bear was doing anything. I'll give it beans for the day. I'll concentrate more on it later. Yeah. I think we're going to have to cock this away from it a little bit. Oh, that's going to be great fun, that is. I think I've got the... Oh, no, it touches there. I think I've got the... the amount that I need, maybe. Who knows? I've had enough now for today. We'll do something else.